I think, first of all, the whole notion of B2B versus B2C was largely driven uh, by the, the kinds of instruments that we used to communicate with consumers. Um, in business to consumer, because usually purchases were relatively small, if they were large, they were infrequent. And so we really had to rely upon mass media in order to get the message out. And in particular, we're talking now about advertising and sales promotion. By contrast, in business, we typically didn't see the consumer as looking for information on business products during TV shows and, uh, and reading magazines. Uh, and so instead, whatever advertising we did in print was really generated to, to, was really created to generate leads for a sales rep. And the reason we could justify the cost of that sales rep, as opposed to relying upon mass media, was because we expected that business account to be significantly large enough that in cases of major accounts, in fact, a single business account might represent as much sales revenue opportunity as we would experience in a consumer selling to an entire market segment. So we developed the business equivalent of a marketing or brand plan became the key account plan or strategic account plan. What we fail to realize, however, and it's, it's uh, almost an embarrassment that we did, is that one size almost never fits all in marketing. Uh, there is lots and lots of business products that are not bought in massive quantities, uh, where it's hard to justify a dedicated sales rep. Um, think office supplies as the classic example. Um, I don't know of a paperclip company that has a sales rep that goes around talking to companies uh, that buy paperclips. All of that is done through retail uh, with, backings, uh, with the backing and support of sales promotion and, and advertising and the like, just like it is done on the consumer side. More importantly and perhaps even more fundamentally though, um, we always believed that when organizations bought, there was a rationality that there was indeed some procurement policy that was objective and that, uh, that ostensibly removed uh, the individual uh, from the decision making. Uh, and as such, you know, uh, business to business was considered more fact-based, less emotion-based. That's not true and it hasn't been true for a long time. Um, you know, one need only look at the whole computer revolution that happened in the, the, the 70s and 80s and the famous, uh, the famous tagline, nobody ever got fired for buying IBM. Right. Uh, at a time when everybody was uncertain about what operating systems and what computer would become industry standard, IBM was there with security. It wasn't about specs. It, it was about you know, protecting your hindsight uh, and, and, and your job. Um, so we sometimes, I think, forget that organizations don't buy products. People in organizations buy products. And they, they approach that purchasing task with many of the same tools that they learned as individual private consumers. So emotion does play in. Now, having said that, there's no question that we see a drive on part of many businesses as customers to have things handled by procurement on the basis of a quote, a, a price-based decision. Internet-based uh, selling, au internet-based auctions and the like are all a manifestation of this. And certainly once you're dealing with a procurement department, what you're basically being told by the buyer is your product is now staple, it's well understood, we understand what we get from it and so there's really no need for any elaboration because there's really no way that you can quote unquote add value to what you're already selling us. So now the question becomes, if I know what I want, who's the cheapest source of supply? It's perfectly economically rational. What that tells us, however, is what we've always known but I think sometimes forget you never go back to a customer selling the same product over and over again because the moment you do that, you remove the end user from the purchase decision. And the moment you remove the end user from the purchase decision, all of those little extras, all of those features, all of that product engineering that you do 
to make the product more productive for the end user or more convenient to use, none of those things gain any value in the eyes of procurement. It's like saying to procurement, I'm going to charge you for things. Procurement is being judged on the basis of how little they pay. And procurement basically is going to look at you and implicitly, if not explicitly, say, if you want a premium for those conveniences, go talk to the product person buying your product. Don't talk to me. Once it comes to my desk, I'm buying to a spec. So we always want to have that, that end user, that, that end consumer, involved in the purchase decision uh, about which supplier to buy from. And you don't do that if you're selling the same thing over and over again. Why would we? So we want to keep it to, so that we have to have that person involved in order to, to get credit for all of these things that we're doing.